Kitten Podcast number 43. My name is Mallory, otherwise known as Just a Dose of Love all around the internet. So you can find me on Instagram, Reddit, Facebook, Ravelry, and TikTok under Just a Dose of Love and A Dose of Love on Etsy, though I am most active on Instagram. I'm recording here on March 7th. It's approximately 11 a.m. in Edmonton, Alberta, where I live with my favorite feline, Sasika Sonia. Chris and a snake named Heidi. If you're a new viewer, welcome to the channel. This is a bi-weekly-ish video podcast about knitting and crafts and whatever else I happen to be making at the time. If you are a returning viewer, thank you so much for coming to spend some time with me today. I'm going to jump right into what is on my needles. And I do have to confess, guys, I have not done a ton of knitting in the last month since I've seen you. So there really is not a ton to show you on the knitting front, but I will show you anyways, because it is a sweater project and apparently sweaters are the new thing that I love to knit. Um, so let me just, let me just show you what I'm working on here. So this is the Lilith sweater pattern. It's by baby cocktails and all of the information for everything that I talk about will be in the show notes below as well. So if you miss anything, don't worry, you can just find it below. But here it is. Uh, is this the front or the back? This is, oh, that's the back. Okay, here's the front. <laughs> so yeah, this is the, the Lilith sweater. It is knit from the neck down. Um, in kind of a raglan style increase here on the sleeves. You separate the sleeves from the body and then you knit all the way down. So theoretically I can try it on to make sure it's the right length before I bind off, which is spectacular. I have never done this, but I think I probably will on this just so I can make sure my sizing is correct. It's knit up in the Nipix Brava on the persimmon colorway. It's 100% acrylic yarn, which means it is 100% washable and I don't need to worry about it losing its shape or um, felting or shrinking and becoming a sweater for my cat. So let me just show you here. It's got this beautiful, beautiful detail in the neckline, which is why I really, really wanted to knit up this sweater. Now it is a pattern on a Ravelry. I'm sorry if you can hear Sika crying. I think she's upset that the door is closed, but she will get distracted and start doing something else soon, I'm sure. So hopefully that's not too distracting. Maybe you can't hear it at all and you just think I'm crazy and I don't blame you for that. Anyways, back to the sweater. <laughs> so yeah, it's knit up in this beautiful persimmon colorway, which one of the things I love, first of all, is that it's orange. I love orange. But there's also like these little yellow, almost, almost yellow highlights. Almost. It's really, really pretty. I absolutely love, love the color. And what else do I have to tell you about this? I think it's gorgeous. I'm really excited to wear it. Uh, <laughs> also, apparently I am a very... I wouldn't say I'm a loose knitter. I am not a loose knitter, but in order for me to get gauge on this sweater, I am using 3.75 millimeter, um, which is also US number five, circular knitting needles. So it's quite a bit smaller than the needles that they call for, but I am within about a half stitch of gauge, which is close enough for me. So it'll have a slight bit of extra positive ease when I wear it and that's okay. I'm okay with that. I am just really really excited for it to be for, for it to be finished so I can wear it. And one of the other things I wanted to point out about this sweater pattern, which I had never I've never run into before in my very limited experience of sweater knitting, uh, but she is actually pre-built short rows into the pattern so that it builds up the neck a little bit in the back. So it'll have a little bit of neck shaping to it and might fit just a little better on the back collar there. So that's really exciting. Here it is again. I, last podcast, I said hopefully I'd have it finished for the next podcast, which I skipped entirely. So it's been an entire month since I said that. Uh, and clearly it's not finished yet. 
so let's aim for the end of March, maybe? Yeah, but here it is. So I've knit about this much. I think this is where I was last podcast. I just separated the sleeves. And now I'm getting pretty darn close to the end of the, the hip shaping. Then it'll be on to the bottom ribbing, which I can also do this this beautiful pattern in, so I might, I might just do a ribbing, but we'll see. We'll see where the needles take me. But there's, there's that. So that is my biggest and only current knitting project. Yeah, yeah, as far as creative things go, um, knitting, knitting has not been uh, something I've been spending a lot of time on these last four weeks, which makes me kind of sad, but um, my hands are getting a little sore and also I <laughs> cut my finger with um, with my jeweler's blade, my jeweler's saw, this is what it looks like. I was making some rings, which I'll show you guys in a little bit here, and let's see if you can see how fine the teeth are on this thing. Probably not. This, yeah, little jeweler's blade. And I saw it, saw it right into the tip of my finger, <laughs> which was fine. It really hurt. Um, I hurt a lot. <laughs> and then it was fine, um, but it was super tender for about a week. And that, of course, is right where my knitting needle tip hits. So I was set back about a week for sure on, on the knitting because I, that, that fingertip was just too tender. I couldn't deal with it. There's a lesson to be learned here. And it's using cut resistant gloves when you are using sharp objects, uh, which I now have. So that's great. <laughs> no more cuts for this lady. Nope. Maybe, maybe some birds, we'll see. Anyways, safety first. Who knew crafting was such an intense sport? Actually, I think we all do. Crafting is uh, intense. <laughs> okay, what am I drinking today? I am just drinking some coffee with macadamia nut milk, which I absolutely love. And that's a, I want to go scroll up on my notes here. Clearly it's not on my phone, it is below my phone. Okay, I'm rambling a lot today. I'm gonna try and get back on track here and focus. Focus, now we. So in the what's off my needles section, I, I don't have anything off my needles. Instead, I have something off the bench, I guess, is what I would say. I did finish three rings with gems, which is very exciting. It's also how I cut myself, but this is a learning curve and I'm gonna, I'm gonna get really good at this. It's gonna happen. If you're wondering why I used copper, Let's start with, let's start with ring number one. It's because it works the same as silver, so I've been told. Uh, so once I'm used to copper, theoretically, I will be also used to using silver, and the transition should be relatively smooth and seamless. But also, with all of the stock market craziness that's going on, the price of silver is absolutely astronomical, and as a learner, I don't want to be spending money on something that is that expensive right now. Makes sense, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So ring number one. This is the first ring I made. These are all pretty rough, so please withhold your judgment. <laughs> um, so it's made up, this, this is a milky jade stone and it's round. Pretty cute, I think. Definitely something I would wear. I have worn it a few times. Um, now, You'll notice the discoloration there, and that's because copper solder doesn't actually turn copper. After you use it, it turns this lovely gray color. I'm not sure why, um, but apparently that's a thing. So I think, I think that's kind of ugly, but whatever. That's what practice rings are for. And yeah, there it is. Beautiful, beautiful milky jade stone. And that was the first one. And the second one here was 
the oval milky jade stone. And I really like this one because it's got like that almost crack look in it. I think it's really, really pretty. But there's the second one. So my bezel was a little bit better. The bezel is this copper edge here that keeps the stone in place. Now I had to cut that myself. So it looks a little better. It's not quite as tall as the copper, uh, the copper, the circular one is, right? It's a little bit shorter. So I was getting a little bit better at it by that point. I, I think, I think that one might be my favorite. I just, yeah, I, I think it's really cute. And the third one is this blue sandstone. Now I, oh yeah, look. It's picking up those sparkles really, really nice. So it looks black. It is actually blue though. And the bezel again, it's looking, looking not too bad on this one. And I also decided I really wanted to try a double band because this stone is a little bit, a little bit bigger than the jade. Not a lot, just a little bit. Yeah, I think it's super pretty. And that was my, my ring making fun. It does take a lot of time. Now these probably took oh, three hours a piece between the mistakes and um, making sure everything fit right and playing with fire in the house is a little scary. So, you know, working up to that. <laughs> But yeah, it was, it was a lot of fun. So there you are again. I did buy uh, a little gem for each of the, the ladies that I work with at work. So I'm going to make them some rings and use that for practice. And the, the gems are super cheap. It's like, this is probably two bucks, it's a dollar fifty. Like definitely, definitely something that I have no qualms um, spending a couple of dollars on at all. And yeah, I think that'll give you some really nice practice. And they all think that the, the grayish solder is kind of like a vintage, vintage look. So I can deal with that. That's good. That makes me happy. Yeah, so that is um, the bulk of the crafting that I have been doing lately. This is going to be a pretty pretty short podcast, I think. Um, but I do have a couple other things that I want to show you and talk to you about. So the first one is that I am finally starting the test knitting progress uh, pro test knitting process for the Goddess Pantheon hat pattern series that I would like to release. So for anyone who doesn't know the backstory on this, because it is a couple of years ago now, for one Christmas I had decided to design and knit up a hat for each of the lovely office ladies I work with. So it was five hats I believe, which was quite the feat, let me tell you. Um, I think I had knit up five hats in five weeks, and that include design as well. So I was like very impressed with myself. Um, but that was a couple of years ago now, and none of these patterns have been tested or published, and I think it's time to, to do that. So the very first hat that I'm starting this process with, I'm naming, I looked up the pronunciation, this is where I started this, and now I can't remember. Um, Amphitrite, Amphitrite, Amphitrite. So Amphitrite was one of the Greek goddesses. She was the queen of the sea and she was so whole in her power that the only time she is really depicted with Poseidon, who is her husband, um, is in like artworks. But as far as her power goes, she was the is, was the goddess of the sea, queen. Yeah, just like powerful, powerful lady. And this hat 
it makes me think of mermaid tails on on the pattern and I wish I could show it to you but I don't have the hat because it was gifted for Christmas so I'm going to I'm going to be knitting one up myself as well during this testing process and I think this is the color I'm going to use one it is a tonal almost solid color two it's kind of blue like the sea and I think it'll show off the pattern really really well so here it is. This is Northern Bay Fibers. Um, it's the Olio colorway. It's a worsted weight, nope, sorry. Olio I think is the base. It's a worsted weight and the colorway is Irish Jig. So here it is. And what, what are we made up of? This is 100% Superwash Merino, yeah. So it's very soft. I am a little bit worried about the slight halo that we have going on here because that may detract a little bit from the lace and the eyelets, but I think it'll work out pretty well. If I notice that while I'm knitting it up, it's not really doing what I want with the pattern, then I'll, I'll switch over, but I've been waiting to use this for a, a while. This was actually a Part of a yarn subscription that my mom had got me. I believe it was a six month yarn subscription from Northern Bay Fibers. And I don't actually know if, actually it was called the Muskoka Yarn Box and I think they were partnered with Northern Bay Fibers. And I don't think the Muskoka Yarn Box is a thing anymore because their Instagram is pretty quiet these days. But this was one of the, the gorgeous schemes that came along with that. So it's very exciting that I'm finally going to use it for a pattern that just means so much to me. You know how you, you buy yarn and you're just waiting for the perfect pattern to use it? I think this is the this is the perfect pattern for this yarn. And we'll see. Yeah, so that's very exciting. I plan to start that this week. Mm -hmm. Yay! Okay. So that's the biggest thing right now that is upcoming in in my knitting world. <laughs> Um, there is a couple of other things I want to share with you. So there was a pattern, a sweater pattern released by Woolen Pine called Peperomia, which is after a plant. So I just had to, had to get it. And it was just released at the end of February here. And I think I have the perfect yarn picked out for it. It is yarn that I had bought previously for a different sweater pattern. And I'm really hoping I can insert a picture here, but I'm not sure if my editing program will let me do that. So if it's not, I do have the link included below so you can check that out. It is an absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous sweater pattern. It uses color work in two contrasting colors and like the leaf pattern just goes from the bottom and kind of fades into um, fades into the sweater around the bust line. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. So, <laughs> so this is what I'm thinking for, for the yarn pairing to use. So I'm thinking this would be the main color body of the sweater and this would be the Peperomia pattern um, that kind of dissolves into, into it. So they're beautiful beautiful pairing here. They're both Knit Picks yarn on the Hawthorne fingering base. Now this is the Ashland colorway. Yeah. Ashland, it's the tonal hand-painted side of the Hawthorne fingering, which is 80%, what are you? 80% superwash fine highland wool and 20% polyamide. So there it is. I'm gonna have to make sure I have enough of it. I have four skeins of this and two of this. I don't know if it's gonna be enough though. So I'm, I'm gonna need to check that pattern, but I also double checked and Knit Picks does have both of these still. So it, it will work out. Anyways, it's the Ashland. And this is not the tonal hand painted yarn. This is, oh, what do they call it? Multi something. I 
don't have that in my notes, but I do have a link and that will take you to the right place. And this is called Berlin, Berlin game, Berlin game. There we go. Oh, isn't it pretty? Yeah, I'm really excited for this. And it's the same, the same composition. So 20% superwash fine Highland wool and the 20% polyamide for, for this. There they are. Oh, so pretty. My goodness. I am very excited for this sweater. I think this is going to be the prettiest, prettiest combination. All right. That is it on the knitting side of things. So I'm going to show you a couple other things that I have acquired in the last couple weeks here that um, I really, really just adore. So first of all, Steph from Steph Cole Creations was having a sale all through the month of February on a lot of her artwork. So I was fortunate enough to pick up some cards from her and the first set got here. Now I have another set coming and they're still in the mail, but look at, look at these. I'm trying really hard not to get the glare here, but just look at those colors. Yeah. Wow. I, I just can't get over this like neon, neon green, neon yellow. Let's see if I can give you a closer look. Yeah. And it's also like, this is actual paint. So it's textured. And it's a set. So there they are. Oh, a little shaky. But yeah, oh my goodness, they are so, so pretty. I can't wait to write someone, write someone on at some cards and send them out. Look at those. Oh, Steph, you're amazing, by the way. I love your art. So there's that, and that just came in the mail. I believe it was on Monday. So I'm really, really excited for the next set to get here. Should be sometime this week. The second thing is the lovely Rosalind over at Archive Boutique. She makes these mask straps. Um, and here's my, my newest set from her. And it's got a plant leaf on both sides. So yeah. Plant Mom represent. Look at that. Love it. So it's just to hang around your head, and then when you put your mask on, whoop, they dangle there. Kind of like earrings. Super pretty. Super pretty. I absolutely love them. I have always had the feeling that if I wore glasses, I would be one of those people to wear the glasses straps. And now that masks are a thing and have been for a while, uh, I've confirmed that I would definitely be the kind of person to wear glasses straps because I wear mask straps and look at them, they are very pretty. Also, she has little adapter ends so you can put them on the ends of your glasses and they don't need to be attached to a mask. Super cool. Super cool. All right. And the last thing I wanna show you guys, I was involved in a secret Santa group with this um, group chat that I'm a part of on WhatsApp. It is worldwide. There are people from all, all corners of the world. Sorry, I just need a coffee break here. Oh, sorry about that. But people from all corners of the world and every year we have an optional secret Santa and funny enough this year my my secret Santa was the person who I had been the secret Santa for the year previous so I thought that was kind of neat it is completely random um, I think we use a random generator to to do the pairings but she was my secret Santa and she was amazing. She sent me a box with, I think, six bath bombs, um, a cat toy, and a couple of other things. But then she sent a second package, and I got this earlier this month. Now, she is like one of the craftiest people I know. When I was um, making paper there in the bathtub, she had sent me a message saying, oh yeah, like I tried paper making once, it's pretty cool. I'm like, oh my goodness, we are so, 
so similar. You are like my soul sister over there crafting, crafting all of these cool, cool things. She made herself a mosaic table this summer. She's just always doing something just that is so, so neat. And one of the things that she does is stained glass. So she made this for me and, and sent it in the mail and nothing broke. Look at it! Oh, it is so, so pretty. I wish I had um, something white that I could throw behind it to show you the colors. But look at it! Oh, Kim, you're amazing. You are absolutely amazing. I don't know where I'm going to put it yet. It has to be somewhere special. I was thinking it could go in my, my craft room window here. Or maybe in the front window, but we'll, we'll have to see. But I almost cried. It was just so sweet. I was speechless, absolutely speechless when I opened the package. So I wanted to share that with you guys because I thought you would also appreciate it. Yeah. Oh. You're wonderful. All right. And that is it. That's, that's it. Yeah, that is actually it. Okay. All right. Look at that. We got a lot done today. <laughs> um, I am going to cut it here before I start rambling about something that doesn't matter. <laughs> um, yeah. Thank you guys so much for coming to spend some time with me today. I, I really love telling you about all of these things, crafty adventures. Um, crafty things that I, I acquire from other, other makers. Absolutely. I love telling you about it. So thank you so much for spending some time with me today. Really appreciate it. If you would like to be notified about future podcasts, there's a little notification bell. Hello, Fern. There's a little notification bell right beside the subscribe button. So just hit those and you'll get an alert whenever they come out. It is ish every two weeks. Although occasionally, like this month, um, once a month, <laughs> I'll do better. But I was feeling pretty low. Anyways, I hope you have an absolutely spectacular rest of your day. If it is beautiful outside, I hope you get to spend some time and just soak in the rays. And I hope you stay safe and warm and happy and healthy. And I will see you again soon.